Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time of day you're joining our service, welcome. And at the beginning of 2021, let me take this opportunity to wish you a very happy and peaceful new year. We begin today with some announcements. We have a special event for all our families, our young people and their friends, and in fact, for absolutely anyone who feels young at heart. We'll be thinking about all the different customs and traditions for celebrating New Year around the world and sharing together in lots of games and fun and laughter. Our New Year Around the World event takes place on Zoom on Monday the 4th of January at 7 p.m. And all of the details on how to join in are on our church website. Our virtual vestry continues on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. This is an online time when absolutely anyone can come along and chat and just let us know how they're doing. The virtual vestry takes place on Zoom and all of the details on how to join in are again on our church website. Throughout January, we'll be having messages of hope on the notice board outside the church building. It's a chance for folk just to think about what their dreams and their expectations for 2021 might be, despite all that has happened and is happening in the world. If you want to write down your hopes and add them to the notice board, you can pop them onto a postcard-sized piece of paper and send them to the church at the address on screen. Our next special edition of our church magazine will be published in January. And if you have any articles or announcements or information that you want included in this issue, please get in touch with me as soon as possible at the email address on screen. On this first Sunday of a new year, we take time to pause and to come before our God and with the psalmist to call out, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Our God's understanding has no limit. The Lord determines the numbers of the stars and calls them each by name. The same Lord builds up, gathers in, sustains. Our loving God heals the brokenhearted and binds up our wounds. The Lord sustains the humble and delights in those who turn to him who put their hope in his unfailing love. Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Extol the Lord, all God's people. Praise our God. Let us worship the Lord.
Let us pray. Loving God, another year has turned and we look back. Back to all the things that have befallen our world, our own lives and the lives of those around us. The traumas of the last year, COVID and lockdowns and social distancing, isolation from family and loved ones. And just as there have been times of tragedy and sadness, so there have also been times of laughter and joy and celebration. But whatever the circumstance, Lord God, you have remained the constant, loving and near to us. We give thanks for your faithful presence. We praise you for your constant, life-changing, ever-present love. Holy One, as we remember the past, we remember too our wrongdoings against others and against you. When we have damaged our relationship with you and with the people around us, when we have found it convenient to neglect our faith and the lifestyle of your people. In Jesus' name, forgive us those sins. Loving God, another year has turned and we look forward, wondering what lies ahead in 2021. We have hopes, dreams and longings the end of COVID, the chance to hug our loved ones, the possibility of sharing time with friends in person. We have the prospect of things that we might be afraid of, the desire to make changes in our lives. But the truth is, Lord, we can never be certain what lies ahead of us. And for some, that is an exciting thought, while for others, it is a frightening prospect. Yet, Almighty God, whatever awaits in this new year, we can be sure and certain of one thing. You will be with us, our friend and our guide. So when we look forward, we do so with confidence the confidence that comes from faith, knowing that we are loved and cared for and always in your sight. We praise you, Lord, God of our past and Lord of our future. Ever-present God, speak to us words of hope for 2021. Lead us closer to you, to worship you with all our hearts, to experience your presence in all that we do. We ask it in Jesus' name. And in his name, we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first hymn today is hymn 235, God is Working His Purposes Out.
John chapter 1, verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son of the Father. John bore witness to him and cried, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, for he was before me. And from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only Son who is in the bosom of the Father. He has made him known. Our thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, still our hearts and minds. Drive out all which distracts from your word. And speak to us now through your servant in the power of your Holy Spirit. And may this meditation be acceptable in your sight. Dear Lord, we pray. Amen. One of the reasons that people give for rejecting faith is that they see God as irrelevant. The complaint leveled against God is often, where is he when you need him? And certainly over these last months, as we have lived through this terrible time in our history, people have asked, where is God in the midst of COVID-19? Where is God in lockdown? Where is God as people struggle and strive through this awful virus? These opening verses of John's gospel give our response. God is not indifferent. In fact, from the very beginning of time, God has been reaching out to people. God has been seeking to touch people's lives. That's the whole point of the Old Testament. It is the story of God interacting with people, showing them his love. The coming of Jesus shouts as loudly as any sound ever has that God does care, that God does love us, and that God proves his love by coming as one of us and living amongst us. The language which John uses to describe Jesus, the language of Jesus dwelling amongst us, is exactly the same phrase that the Old Testament uses to describe God dwelling in the tabernacle and the temple. In effect, John is saying that in Jesus, God moves out of the holy places and becomes one of us to live amongst us in the midst of life. Had God's response to us been to give more laws, people could easily have argued that God is irrelevant. But that's not what God has done. He has come himself in Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He has come to our darkest place. He has lived life he knows what it is to be one of us. He knows what it is to live and to breathe, to fear death, to endure pain, to love laughter. He knows the pleasure of friends close and the hurt of rejection. He knows what it is to be one of us. And he offers us an amazing gift. 
on all who accept him for who he truly is, who give him their allegiance. He offers the right to become God's children. In Jesus born amongst us, we have a God who rolls up his sleeves and gets involved in life. We have a God who, who knows what it is to feel what we feel, to face what we face. We have a God who sets up home in our midst, a God who moves into the neighborhood. In the world of the Christmas story, Relationship with God was limited. It was limited by birthright and genetics. You had to be one of the chosen people. You had to be born into the race of the holy nation. Just as I suppose today, you could say that hope is reserved for some people. It's reserved for those who can achieve. It's reserved for those who are powerful. While those who are poor, those who are outcasts in our society, have no place. At best, they can be seen as charity cases, as people who were done unto, who have no power, who can only receive, who have nothing to offer and nothing to give. But the faith that Jesus offers changes all of that. For Jesus says that all are loved, all are valued, that every single life has a point and a purpose. Each person can know relationship with God. Each person can be a member of the family of God. It doesn't matter who you are or where you have come from. It doesn't matter what you are. It doesn't matter your ability or your bank account. It doesn't matter if you live in the biggest house in the street or if you sleep in a doorway. It doesn't matter if you have degrees after your name or if you cannot write your name. Because such is God's love that anyone is welcome to come to Him. Anyone can know Him. And all who trust in him are welcomed. The hope that Jesus offers us is not more rules to follow, not a new theology to understand, but rather a new relationship, the promise of forgiveness. He offers into our hands an invitation not to join a church, but to become members of the family circle of God, to be so intimate with God that He is our parent and we are His child. Notice that John chapter 1 verse 1 begins with the great sweep of creation, talking about eternal things, describing God and the Word. But it ends in verse 18 with something so intimate, the relationship of the Father and the Son. That's what Jesus is all about. That movement from distant obedience to a fearful God as some terrifying force in the sky to an intimate relationship with the Creator of all things, who is our loving parent, a nearness to God, the God who is with us in each moment of our lives to protect and to love, to guide and to lead, to reveal His purpose and to empower with His Spirit. God has become one of us and He did so in order that we could call Him Father and that he could call us daughter or son. We live every day with the truth of Emmanuel. God is with us. So start every day with that thought. God is with you. Each morning when you get up, declare, God 
is with me. In each moment of stress or hurt, in every pain and every need, in every joy and every celebration, pause. Pause long enough to remember that God is with you. Amen. In our prayers for the world today, we begin with a time of silence, during which I invite you to offer your own prayers to God. These can be prayers for yourself, for loved ones, or indeed for the world at the start of this new year. After that time of silence, we join together in our prayers for others. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, Lord of time and creator of day and night, thank you for your faithfulness shown to us in times past, those moments when we've known your love, your healing, and your company over this last year, even if we didn't recognize your nearness at the time. Thank you for when we have been sure of your answers to our prayers. And thank you that you have shared each moment and each concern of our lives with us. Eternal God, thank you for this new year, for this time of fresh beginnings and new starts, and for the knowledge that come what may in this year ahead, you will never leave us nor forsake us. On you, we can always rely. Holy God, Creator, Savior, you care for this world, a world into which you came as light in the darkness. So hear us now as we pray for the world. Hurt never seems to be far from our lives or from the lives of those around us especially with the danger of COVID everywhere. So today we pray for all who mourn, for all who are ill, for those in hospital and those being cared for at home. We remember the NHS staff, the folk around our community who risk themselves to make life more normal for the rest of us, to make sure that needs are met. We pray for all those who are under such great stress in this economic climate, for those who've lost their jobs, for those who are worried about the future. Pray for all who are hurting. You are the God of life, of promise, the God who is with us even in the darkest places. So reach into their times of darkness and bring them your light. Touch them with your healing and let them know your hope. Fear never seems far away from us these days. There is so much that threatens us or causes us to doubt. That is why your church is here, Lord. Your people living under your love, offering that love to others. But Lord, we feel like such a small community, so inadequate to the task. How can we survive, let alone go out and proclaim you? Lord God Almighty, we entrust our church to your keeping. We commit ourselves to being your people. Lead our church to be true to you in this place and through your church here, 
Touch the lives of all who live in this parish. Lead us to be an effective witness for you so that your light can shine in every home and your hope can be part of every life. In Jesus' name, we ask all our prayers. And in his name, we wait with faith for your answers. Amen. Our last hymn today is Word of Flesh, Eternal Wisdom. We close with the blessing. Go from this time of worship with the living Lord as your companion, your friend and your guide, your encouragement and your saviour. In love and grace, bring the presence of the eternal word, the Lord who is always with us, into your neighbourhood through words and deeds and faith, and the blessing of God, who is Father, Son, and Spirit, rest upon you now and always. Amen.